welcome to another expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by uh, Gabriel Georgiou, who is an expert in in software um, software implementation and choosing software. Um, so welcome, Gabriel. And uh, maybe you just Thank want you. to tell the folks a little bit about your background and then we'll get into the discussion. Absolutely. Sounds great. Um, I have um, more than 15 years experience with um, enterprise software, mostly ERP, but also, you know, other types of software like CRM and even some HR and uh, engineering and, and PLM. And I was involved in pretty much all areas of business software. I'm not really technical, actually. I don't know much programming. I just have some background in, in databases. Um, but otherwise, I was involved in selection, implementation. Uh, I worked for an ERP vendor. Um, I localized the software for um, dealer management, uh, dealership management in Romania. And I also did research. Um, I assume that you're you're familiar mm -hmm. with uh, sure. Gardner and the others. Mm -hmm. I worked for a few smaller companies as a research analyst, mostly for ERP. So uh, I, I was involved in software selection uh, in my research, but I was also project manager for software selection for almost three years. And that was my full time job just to help companies go through the selection process. Excellent. OK, well, what I wanted to talk to you about over the next 10 or 15 minutes is uh, how you see companies, how did they generally go about selecting software like a CRM or, mm -hmm. or marketing automation or whatever, and what that process looks like and what it should look like? Um, because I think this is a it's an important topic because technology is becoming more and more prevalent and there's so many tools out there. But I don't think that a lot of companies have a very good process for selecting the right software. Would that be fair to say? In a way, yes, but I, I, I don't want to necessarily make any judgments because what I noticed in my experience is that there are different, different ways to approach this. So some people are more thorough than others. Some maybe are too detailed, which can complicate their their process so it really depends a lot and it's it's hard to say and it's hard to categorize companies depending on how they approach this uh, what's really interesting though is that when i was in software selection since companies obviously were paying us to help them mm -hmm. they were usually medium to large companies right because smaller companies don't usually have a budget sure. to pay for selection and they to pay to pay for the software itself now, recently, I'm working with uh, Select Hub, which is a um, company that also helps people with software selection. And um, I did some research with them for smaller companies. And there you can see a different behavior. So for the smaller companies, sometimes they may tend to work with consultants, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people who know the industry a bit more than they do. And that makes sense. Um, the thing is, what I noticed is that, for instance, when they um, consider vendors for their new software solution, either ERP or CRM, many times, you know, obviously people will pick the vendors that everyone knows, like mm -hmm. Oracle and SAP and Microsoft and so forth. But there are many, many other vendors out there, and there's a lot of research and data and reports on the internet that pretty much anyone can find. And still, many of those vendors don't seem to be considered. So my, my conclusion there is that, especially for smaller businesses, but it happens to the larger ones as well, um, when they can, they tend to outsource it with mm -hmm. someone that they trust. Um, which it makes sense, but on the other hand, there are so many resources out there nowadays that you can use. I know it takes time, I know it takes effort, mm -hmm. but to be honest, I think it's better to try to do it yourself because you know your business more than anyone else. So if you do it yourself, it's probably better. 
so uh, that's one thing that I've noticed. Yeah. So when you're working with with companies, um, what are some of the what have you seen? Say if somebody is considering a CRM, you know, obviously we're a CRM mm-hmm. vendor. So when somebody's considering a CRM, what are some of the typical criteria that you see that really comes to the top as as a priority? Yeah, usually it's really interesting. Now I'm working on some research for for CRM, uh, hopefully to be published soon. And obviously people are looking for your typical criteria like marketing automation and customer service, account management, uh, lead and uh, campaign management, Salesforce automation, etc. One thing I realized though is that the technical part of the system is almost as important, if not more important than the features. And by that, I mean, first of all, that people want an integrated or a centralized solution, right? Because now they use two or three different solutions plus Outlook or Gmail and Excel and all kinds of things that they use. So that's the one thing they want. Um, They also want something that can grow with their company. So something that is scalable, right? And uh, reporting is one of the major issues that everyone mentioned. And I did research on ERP. And from my experience, I can tell you that reporting and analytics is always a big issue, mostly because people don't know either to go with the canned reports that many solutions are offering or either to go with a BI solution, which is much better but can be more complicated to use Mm -hmm. so you know it's it's really hard to to find a fine balance between the two yeah one thing that you mentioned there that i think is interesting and that is um and this is something that that we have seen ourselves right is Mm -hmm. so when we talk about crm so you said so to some people crm is a is marketing automation customer service and but a lot mm-hmm. of time, a lot of times, what we find is that when somebody is looking for CRM, what they're really looking for is is sales force automation. What they're really looking right. for is sales process, and you know, to, mm-hmm. be, able to, to be able to do customize a sales process, and you know, have good sales analytics, with pipeline management. So, do you find that uh, that that's also a, a quite a problem? Is that um, some software categories are so broad that it's really yeah. hard for the for the for the company to know what they're looking for. Yes, absolutely. And that's why uh, you know many companies search for help when they do their selection mm-hmm. because I noticed two tendencies that that companies have they either are too generic And when they try to compare vendors, they realize that everyone does marketing and everyone does SFA. So there's, you know, they all look alike. It's hard to differentiate. Or they tend to go into a lot of detail. Many times there are lots of criteria that are very, very vague and, you know, something like uh, um, convert a lead into um, into a customer. That really is something that everyone does, right? right? So, yes, they are struggling with that. And um, the problem in marketing as opposed to other markets like ERP is that there are so many tools and point solutions. And I think only in marketing automation, there are about 4,000 only marketing automation. Mm-hmm. Uh, in CRM, there are hundreds and there are all kinds of tools for, for sales intelligence, for gamification, for collaboration, for, and all these things can be very confusing, right? Yeah. So when you work with the companies, do you advise them? Because here, here's what I always do when it comes to a situation like this is, mm-hmm. is look at what are the things that are most important to you today? So if... Right. If in most organizations, if, if sales and revenue is the most important t- thing to you, then perhaps that's a good place to start and find, yeah. find the right um, solution to help your, your, your sales organization, to help pipeline management, and then move on from there. Because I find that, you know, as you said, there are so many tools that people are going to grabbing tools from here and there mm. instead of sort of prioritizing what are the areas that they should address first. Right. 
Well, uh, th this reminds me of something I found recently, um, a paper, a research paper from the 90s, actually, about ERP selection. And the one thing the author was saying is that you should start with a vision. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, I think it all starts with business, as you said. What do I need to achieve from a business perspective, not from a technical perspective? All the technical part should come after you define what you want to do from a business perspective. So either you want to grow or maybe you're in an industry, for instance, in ERP manufacturing is very, very slowly growing. There are lots of issues, so it's not very realistic to think that you may double or triple your capacity most of the time. In CRM, that may happen. So it really depends on your business objectives and a vision. It should be a vision for three to five years, I think, for CRM, for ERP, maybe 10 years, you know, because you can't pick a CRM now and two years start over. That doesn't make any sense. So I think that's where it should start. Yeah. Unless you pick the wrong one, of course. <laughs> yeah, that that happens. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It happens. Um, you know. um, but uh, getting back to that point, though, I, I think is a is an interesting one as well is um, is having, as you said, having a vision for what you want, because um, I'm sure you've experienced this a lot is where uh a an organization will think that you know this software or that software that will solve the problems we have right. rather than so process problems will be solved instead of looking at the pro processes first and making sure your processes mm -hmm. are right before you automate them is that something that you come across a lot yes absolutely and i think that's a main challenge from two perspectives one is the company culture it, it you know it starts with executives i, I have to say it uh, you know um, change management is definitely important i think change management should start even before you think about changing your software first you need to realize why uh, sometimes to be honest with you it's not even that obvious that you actually need to change it mm -hmm. So that's where people should start. It should start with the executives, but it should involve pretty much everyone in the company or everyone using that type of software. Mm -hmm. So that is a main issue. The other main issue is that change management can either be done through consultants, which can be expensive, mm -hmm. or if you want to do it internally, it's a lot of effort. And in a way, it costs you a lot of money because, you know, it takes people away from work sure. or you need to, to train them. So that's why many companies, they prefer to spend on software, which they know they need. And they hope that the training of the software will also do some change management. And that's true, but it's usually not enough. Right. And then they're out of money and they don't have money for change management. So they will improvise or they will adapt as best as they can to, to the new software. Yeah, no, I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's spot on. Um, so you would advise um, before you ever uh, decide on a, on a software solution is number one, have a vision for what you want to achieve, figure out the part, mm -hmm. of, the, part of the business that's your priority to, to fix or in or whatever it is and right. and then prepare yourself prepare the change management in advance would that be a fair summation yeah absolutely and one thing that i think is also important and i noticed even with large companies is that people users need to understand the business logic behind the software unfortunately that doesn't happen often enough uh, when I implemented ERP, I had users who were telling me, you know, just show me how it works. I don't need to understand. Right. And that that's a problem, obviously, mm -hmm. because it, it means that you don't really care how what you do impacts others and that cannot work. Yeah. Right? Well, especially if it's a process, you know, something that's process yeah. driven or workflow yeah. driven. Of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And for another uh, customer that was pretty large actually with a pretty big budget they're ready to spend a lot of money on uh, on software but uh, when we're doing interviews we realized that many people had no basic crm knowledge like pipeline management right. you know 
so how how will those users be productive no matter how great the system is when they don't have basic business knowledge that that's a that's a big issue yeah i mean it's hard to use a pipeline management tool if you don't know how to manage pipeline yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean you can use it automatically right someone's going to tell you that you need to follow these steps and you will do it but obviously that's not an efficient way to use enterprise software yeah. definitely so in the last couple of minutes, uh, where do you see the future of, uh, you know, particularly as you're involved with people doing, uh, you know, software selection, what do you see? The f do you see anything changing in how people will analyze and, and uh, the criteria they'll use to decide on software going forward? Yes, yeah, so one trend that's happening now, and I think it's both good and bad, obviously, it has, you know, pros and cons, is um, user review. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably noticed that there are more and more websites out there and now you know like you used to do for Airbnb or for products people do it for software which can be great the only problem is that first of all it's hard to analyze hundreds of reviews mm -hmm. and no one's going to read hundreds of, com of, of comments you know it really has to be a bit more structured and on these platforms, people usually give some ratings like five stars, three stars, etc. But that again is too vague. You cannot rate a full CRM system. What does it mean? What does four stars mean? It's an overall rating, but you're not rating for marketing sure. automation or for SFA. Or... So that's my main concern with this. The other concern is that um, sometimes when uh, these platforms generate reports, they only include vendors who had, let's say, minimum 10 reviews. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a good way to create research because it may be a great product. They just don't have reviews for sure. some reason, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then you may have others with 10 reviews and plus who may not be great products, yeah. but they are including in your research. So you see, this is this. This may lead to uh, even more confusion in the market. And I'm afraid that people or especially small businesses will tend to use those platforms to make decisions, which I think will lead to pretty much the same problems we have today. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And those um, and those sites just seem to be multiplying. There seems to be a new, oh, absolutely. A new review yeah. site popping up every day. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, yeah. this, this was great. So, um, Gabriel, um, before we finish, would you like to tell the, the viewers a little bit more about your company, how they can contact you? Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my company is actually called Questions Consulting. It's, it's funny because uh, years ago, I, I realized and I still think that one thing that's really missing a lot in business is critical thinking and, mm -hmm. and questioning. So my philosophy is that, you know, my, my research is around that. And um, my main um, focus, if you want, is to do research and also help, um, as you mentioned, company with software selection. And my research um, is a bit different from what's happening in the market, which is why it's also happening a bit slower because it's something new and it, it takes time. What I'm trying to do is very simple, actually, is to do scripted demos of products, which is related, actually, to software selection. Because if you're looking for something, you have tons of white papers and everything, and it's hard to compare. But if you look at a demo that is based on a story or a scripted scenario that shows the problems that you're facing on a daily basis, you will much better understand what the product actually does mm -hmm. instead of looking at some slides or a high level description of the product, which in the end doesn't really mean much. Yeah. So that's one thing that, I, that I'm trying to do. Um, my other approach for research is to combine research areas that for some reason that I don't really understand are separate like customer experience mm -hmm. and ERP you wouldn't think of ERP when you talk about customer experience, right? You would think about collaboration and CRM and gamification and so on. 
But if you think about it in manufacturing, how can you have a good customer experience if you don't have good quality, if you don't have the products in inventory when the customers need them, and so on and so forth. So that is something that I'm trying to explore as well. Great. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Gabriel. This great conversation. Um, look forward to hearing Thank more you from very you much. in the future. Again, John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, another uh, expert interview, and we'll be bringing you more in the not-too-distant future. Thank you for listening and watching.